After months of speculation, Everton are finally on the brink of having new owners. Farhad Mashiri's disastrous time at the club is coming to an end, with the Miami-based investment firm 777 Partners set to take his place. The deal will see 777 acquire Mashiri's entire 94.1% stake for a reported £550 million, although they still need to pass the Premier League stringent owners and directors test and provide various other assurances before the takeover is rubber stamped. With Mashiri gone, Everton could ignite the process of restoring their battered reputation. But new owners are no guarantee of success, and the Toffees have plenty to worry about before they can rely on 777. A recent 3-1 victory away to Brentford disguised the fact Sean Dyche's outfit looks set for yet another battle against relegation, a feeling they've become all too familiar with. 777 may not have all the answers to rescue Everton either. Their track record with clubs under their control is mixed to say the least, and now they're set to take on their biggest challenge to date. So what are the problems Everton's prospective owners are inheriting, and do they really have what it takes to finally stabilise the blue side of Liverpool? Let's find out in our latest Football Daily Explained. The wreckage of Mashiri's reign is no secret. Since his arrival in 2016, eight different permanent managers have come and gone under the Iranian billionaire, who's invested more than £750 million on a vast array of players. But rather than push towards Europe, the club has regressed. They have only avoided relegation by the skin of their teeth over the past two seasons, while they've accrued debts worth over £417 million in the last five years alone. They now must appear before an independent commission over alleged breaches of financial fair play, a process which could see them hit with significant penalties, as well as face legal action from clubs who have been relegated in their wake. Resentment towards Mashiri and the board has hit breaking point too. Mashiri has not attended a home game in nearly two years, while last January the entire board of directors failed to attend a defeat to Southampton at Goodison Park after what was described as a real and credible threat to their safety and security. But the relentless demonstrations have yielded results, with three senior members of the board resigning this summer, including CEO Denise Barrett-Baxendale and Chief Finance and Strategy Officer Grant Ingalls. Bill Kenwright has stayed on as chairman for now, as until a takeover is complete, Kenwright and Mashiri have a major project to manage, the construction of Everton's new stadium at the Bramley Moor Dock. But even this beacon of hope has faced challenges along the way. Mashiri has largely funded the development himself, however, with construction costs spiralling, he sought outside investment, securing a £100 million loan from MSP Sports Capital. MSP were then in talks to buy Everton outright, only for that deal to collapse and pave a way for 777 to enter negotiations. But MSP and a separate creditor, Rights and Media Funding, could object to Everton's potential new owners, or insist that loans worth £300 million are repaid by the club. It's up to 777 to prove they're competent both financially and functionally, or Everton could stumble towards yet another disaster. In the meantime, Mashiri believes he's found the perfect custodian for the club. In his own words, I believe they're the best partners to take our great club forward, with all the benefits of their multi-club system. As alluded to, 777 partners are part of the wave of multi-club ownership models flooding the game, and Everton will join a global network consisting of Genoa, Hertha Berlin, Standard Liège, Melbourne Victory, Red Star in France and Vasco da Gama of Brazil, not to mention their minority stake in La Liga giant Sevilla. Now, there are plenty of benefits to this approach. Red Bull, Red Bird Capital and City Football Group are testament to that fact, while Mashiri has acknowledged that the days of individual owners or benefactors in football are dwindling. 777 have voiced their own excitement at becoming owners of the club too. The American firm is fronted by Stephen Pascoe and Josh Wanda, the latter describing the acquisition of Everton as humbling and a privilege, saying, Our primary objective is to work with fans and stakeholders to develop the sporting and commercial infrastructure for the men's and women's team that will deliver results for future generations of Everton supporters. Wanda has also promised to complete the Bramley Moor Stadium development. This will be music to the ears of Toffee fans made delicious by Mashiri's rule. Even his abrupt takeover announcement infuriated the club's shareholders association, who described the lack of pre-warning as baffling. They've already sent a blunt message to 777, quote, we encourage the current and future owners to walk their engagement talk immediately. What will not delight the Everton faithful are accusations of fraud and financial mismanagement that are currently levelled at 777 partners, all allegations the company strenuously denies. Josh Wander's open ambition for his multi-club network will raise some eyebrows too. 
In a recent interview with the Financial Times, he revealed his belief that clubs have done a horrible job extracting full value from the sport. As part of what he labelled a new wave of commercialisation coming to football, Wanda said, The vision for this football group is that one day we're not selling hot dogs and beers to our customers, it's that we're selling insurance or financial services or whatever. He also implied that the intensity and loyalty shown by fans to their clubs shows they want to be monetized. Now, this approach has not been well received by supporters already under 777's control. Sections of the fan base at the culturally left-wing Red Star in Paris have shown disdain for its new profit-driven direction. While at a recent Hertha Berlin game, a banner was unveiled which read, Wanda, insurance for football fans, the only thing we assure you is our disapproval of you. Hertha Berlin followers have plenty to be aggrieved at too. Dial Tadama suffered relegation from the Bundesliga last season, then reinvested just a fraction of the 30 million euros they earned in player sales into the squad. And their start to life in Bundesliga Zwei has been sluggish to say the least. That said, Hertha's relegation seemed inevitable even before 777's arrival last March, but their actions since are struggling to win over the fans. Followers of Standard Liège in Belgium are also growing disillusioned at 777's multi-club network. Last season, they missed out on European competition and then went winless in the first six games of the current campaign. The club's ultras revealed their own banner at a recent home game which read, Multiple properties or multiple mediocrities. No money, no ambition. Your galaxy should not harm our future. However, Genoa's journey with 777 is far more positive than the rest, even if they had to go backwards to go forwards. According to Gazzetta dello Sport journalist Filippo Grimaldi, 777 partners have healed the Griffins. The appointment of their former player and national team striker Alberto Giladino as manager tapped into the fan base's emotional side, and the club went on to gain automatic promotion from Serie B last term. Josh Wander has kept up appearances at Stadio Luigi Ferrari, while the recent 12 million euro addition of forward Matteo Rategi from Boca Juniors shows they are prepared to be ambitious in the market. Grimaldi told the Liverpool Echo the following, Overall, my opinion of 777 partners is extremely positive. I don't know the reality of Everton, but based on what happened here at Genoa, I could only express a feeling of trust towards them. Given the resentment against the American firm elsewhere, Genoa's story should reassure Everton fans craving a positive new beginning. 777 partners have prioritised setting up a competitive but financially sustainable club at Genoa that can compete in Serie A, and this could well be the blueprints they follow on Merseyside. That said, relegation is simply not an option for Everton. The financial situation is so dire at Goodison Park, the loss of revenue and drain of talent that follows a Premier League exit could be catastrophic, severely delaying any bright new future at the Bramley Moor docks. 777's instant priority, if their takeover is sanctioned, should be keeping Everton afloat this season. According to the iNews, the Florida-based firm will invest financial and human capital into the club, starting with funds to strengthen in January. But untangling the cultural and economic mess left behind by their predecessors will be a momentous task in itself. Time will tell if 777 partners have learned from their previous mistakes, as their hastily assembled multi-club network will graduate to new heights with a Premier League side in its pack. Pasco and Wanda's crash course in football club ownership is over, and at Everton, there is simply no room for error. So that was our look on what Everton's future could be under 777 partners, but Toffees fans, we want to hear from you. Could these be the guys to save you, or has Mashiri made a blunder choosing your next owner? Let us know in the comments down below. As always, like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to Football Daily if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.